Jane Josh and just, just emanate the greatness. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I'm Josh Pauls. Uh, I'm 19 years old right now. Uh, first me, I will, I've been playing sled hockey. That's my sport. For 9 or 10 years now. Longer than I can imagine. And it really all started with um, me and my dad playing, hockey, playing street hockey in my driveway. Because I could never skate. I mean, I never really tried, but I kind of figured sitting, I can barely stand on these things. Standing on two really thin blades is probably not a good idea. So I went and I played, I love playing goalie, so he bought me some big goalie pads and he shoot tennis balls at me and I try to stop it. And then I, when I realized I was watching TV and I was like, I really want to like play competitively. I mean, yeah, it's great, my dad shoots for me, but I want to play against other people, other people my own age, these guys that are older, better than me, and I want to get better. And so I went. My mom found a flyer at a ring, and a sled hockey team was playing an able-bodied team who got in sleds, and they played against each other. Of course, the sled hockey team kicked their butts, because it, it's really hard when you, when you first get into a sled. It's a lot of coordination, because when you're in a sled, you're on two blades, and you have a metal frame on top of those blades. You have a seat, and then instead of one long hockey stick like most players have, we have two shorter ones about that big. On one end is to play the puck, on the other end is metal teeth. We use our arms to propel ourselves. And so it takes a lot, long time to really try it out. I got on the ice like during, after that game and I, I wasn't too sure if that was really what I wanted to do because I was watching TV and I was like, I just want to stand up like everybody else. I want to go skate like those guys. And so finally a team came to my area and I said, well, this is what I got, so I might as well make the best of my situation. So I got on the ice, and they're, and they're all like, okay, who wants to be a goalie? I raised my hand, and I said, okay, you might be able to be a goalie. So they gave me a goalie stick, and I was really excited, because the goalies are all the big guys. The guys, I don't know, goalies are crazy, because they take, the puck is about that big. It's really hard rubber, so it hurts if you get hit by it. And that's all goalies do. They, they want to get hit by the puck, because they want to stop it. So right away, so I knew something was wrong. I wanted to get hit by pucks. So, now um, when I first started, I got out, I started skating, and they told me I was too fast to be a goalie. And I was really upset because I, I couldn't be a goalie. But I figured, all right, well, I'm fast, so I can go skate around everybody, and I can't really handle the puck very well, but I can skate past some people. So, when we first started, we were a really new team, and we really... We weren't very good. We lost all of our games that first season. But the thing is, a lot of the times I was like, this is dumb. Why am I doing this? I really want to win. I really want to win. But we're, we're terrible. But we just started. And so my dad kept saying, well, just give it time. Give it time. You'll get better. You'll all get better. And you'll start winning games. And sure enough, the next season we started winning more games. And we started winning more games. And we won more games. So it started getting more fun. And it's only, and the only reason I'm where I'm at now is because I stuck with it. I didn't, like Josh said, I didn't give up. I stuck with it and I kept playing. And in 2008, I made the junior national team. And we went to world champ, the world championship was being held in the U.S. And along with the disabled festival, which holds sled hockey for people with lower body disabilities, special hockey for people with mental disabilities, standing amputee hockey for anybody missing below the knee amputees or arm amputees, and uh, deaf or hard of hearing hockey. And so we went there and we played a couple games and we watched the national team and I'm sitting there watching them going, I'm one level below these guys. I just gotta work really hard and I can get up there really soon. But I didn't know how long it was gonna be. And so we watched the games and we played a game and as we coming off the ice, one of the national players guys goes, you're a really good skater, keep working. I thought that was really cool because he took the time to come watch our game and then come to our locker room, which the rink was huge. So he had to go down a couple elevators and roll around the rink. And it was really, really exciting to have that encouragement. <coughs> and so the next year, I went to a development camp and I get a call after the camp's over saying, hey, are you gonna try out for the national team? I said, no, I don't think I'm ready. And he said, well, we want to give you a shot anyway. 
So we're going to bring you to, our, go to the national camp in August. And I said, all right, cool. So that year, I made the national team. I was rostered a couple months after that. So I made the team. And we ended up winning the world championship, which was really cool. And it was kind of funny because the first tournament that season, we won bronze. And everybody was so sick of, everybody had been on that team way longer than I have. Everybody was sick of, of winning bronze. Everybody's throwing their medals away. And, I'm sitting there going, this is my first medal, this is exciting, this is great, I'm going to keep this forever, I'm going to hang this up on my wall, I mean, yeah, it's bronze, but it, it's exciting because I'm playing, I'm playing and doing what I want, and doing and having a lot of fun with it, and I didn't play much that first year, but it took a lot, it, it helped me take a step back and really see everything and how it was that much faster than I was even used to thinking and playing. And so the next year, they had tryouts for the Paralympic team. And that's, that was my goal all along. As soon as I started playing stuff, I, I want to make it to the national team. I want to play in the Paralympics. That's the biggest event that they have. And I go to tryouts, and I get off the ice at the end. The coaches call me in the locker room. Hey, I want to talk to you. Well, we have guys that are bigger, stronger, more experienced. So we're not going to take you. And that, that really hit me hard. And they said, we're going to bring you, we're going to send you to the junior national team, and we don't want you to sulk, we, don't, we want you to be a leader, we want you to help those guys get better. And if anything happens, anybody retires, anybody gets hurt, you're the first one we're going to call. And so I remember driving back with my dad, and I remember telling him, I was like, Dad, I didn't make it, but I'm going to prove him wrong. Because we ended up, that year was the first year they had joint camps with the national team and junior national team. I said, you know what, that first camp, I'm going to show them that I deserve to be on that team. They made a mistake in sending me down. I'm going to work harder than anybody on the national team is going to work. Because I'm going to show them that they made the wrong decision. Because I really want to put my heart and soul into it. And it just so happened that one of the guys retired a couple months later. And sure enough, I get a call and he says, hey, we want you to come back. You're going to have just as good of a shot because they still had to make some roster cuts. They still had to make cuts to people. So they said, you're going to be given an equal shot, and you're going to be given the same chance as anybody else. I said, all right, I can give it a shot. This is, and I remember running through my house. I mean, I didn't have my legs on. I was running on my nose. I'm like, mom, mom, I made it, I made it, I made it. I'm on, I'm on. I just need to make the final cut. And I was so excited, and that didn't stop me, though. That didn't stop me from working hard. Because once you're at the top level, you got to work a lot harder to stay at that level. And that's part of it. You just got to work hard. Good things come from working hard. You can be the most talented player and have a bad mindset, like Josh said, and you're not going to accomplish anything. Nobody's going to want to be anywhere to be near you. So you got to have the right mindset. You got to, I mean, for me, I play in sports, so you got to have the team mentality. And you just got to have the right attitude that I can do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to prove everybody wrong. And so that year, I made it, ended up making the final cuts, and we went. We decided to go 5-0, five, oh, five wins, zero losses in the whole Paralympics, and we didn't want to allow goals. We didn't allow any goals at all. That had never been done before. The most, they, they were, I think, a team that had three shutouts, which means you don't give up a goal, we had five. And, I mean, Josh has running legs, and this isn't going to be as heavy, but I have my, uh, my Paralympic medal, which... It's my pride and joy. I love this. This is, this is my new paper. This is my new paper. So I've been on the national team, that was my second year. This is 
hopefully if I make the team in trials this year, it's going to be my fifth year. Last year we ended up winning the world championship because, I mean, we didn't have five shutouts like last year, but it was still pretty amazing. So I have another medal I can pass around because why not show them? <laughs> This year, last year was my first year in college, and I had a choice between Lindenwood University in St. Charles, Missouri, which is near St. Louis, or I could go to University of New Hampshire. They were both thinking about offering sled hockey programs for scholarships, and I figured, okay, I could go to University of New Hampshire, I could go to the established program, and I could go, like, I could go where everybody else is going. That's where all the sled hockey guys go if they're not in college. I, I thought, I was like, well, I could go to St. Louis. They don't have a team right now. They might not have a team for another two years. But if I go there and I'm able to help start a team, that's two years for me that I can play. But that's also four years for somebody else, or four years for somebody else. So I wanted to help expand the sport because you got to put, you got to help the community. It's such a small community, even just the whole disabled community. you got to put back into it. Like, I don't want to, uh, um, yeah, all right, sorry I'm not a very that great of a speaker, <laughs> but um, so last year I went to St. Louis and we, our team made a dramatic improvement from when I first got there to now and we ended up winning a national championship in a shootout against our rivals from Chicago. And so this isn't as impressive, but it's still kind of cool because it has, it actually shows a sled hockey player, so you can kind of, you kind of get a little bit better uh, understanding of what it looks like. And so, I mean, Josh had a way more inspiration to speech and was kind of telling my life. <laughs> I always wore pants, always wore pants. No matter if it was 100 degrees out, because I just wanted to be just like everybody else. But now, I mean, I'm, I'm almost never wearing pants because I can do this, and people look at me and go, whoa, whoa. And so, I, I mean, I have really brightly colored shoes, so I'm, ne I never, I'm never sure if they're staring at my legs or my shoes. But I think, I think it's pretty cool. And I've really learned to sit back and go, this is what makes me different. This is what makes me unique. I don't want to be like everybody else. Because being like everybody else is boring. It is. You, you don't, but you don't have to have a disability to be different. You just have to go out and do something that, and make a difference in somebody's life or in anywhere. And, all right, I don't know really what else to say. So I'm going to leave you with my senior quote. In high school, we picked a senior quote, and I love this one. I was going to use some stupid one and make me funny, but I thought this one really kind of summed up my attitude. The only disability in life is a negative attitude.